This is part two in a series of videos about digital society's internal assessment. And this video here is to help students uh, navigate their way through the multimedia presentation. Uh, so let's start with the uh, importance of the internal assessment. As you can see, uh, as we start here, the internal assessment, if you're a, uh, an SL student, it's worth 30% of your overall grade. And if you're a higher level student, Oops, I made a mistake there. That's supposed to be an H. If you're a higher level student, it is worth 20%. Uh, so it's important. Now, if you're like me, I'm not fantastic in exams under pressure, but I, I prefer kind of an assignment style. So this internal assessment really suits me. So you've got time to think about this. You've got time to edit and redo and get help from teachers and classmates. So really make the most of this uh, opportunity with this internal assessment. Um, so this guide is to try and help you get top marks for this internal assessment in the multimedia section. So there's two parts. Now my last video was all about getting started with the internal assessment and that I focused on criterion A and criterion B. So I'm not going to focus on that in this video. I'm going to focus on the presentation. So the presentation will be focusing on criteria C, D and E. Now criteria C is worth six marks. Criterion D is the conclusion worth six marks, and then Criterion E is about the communication, and that's worth three marks. So there's a lot of marks here in the multimedia presentation. So I suggest putting a lot of time and effort into the multimedia presentation, more so than your document. Okay, some IA specifications. First of all, it cannot exceed 10 minutes. Uh, you're gonna submit it as one file, and you need to, it's multimedia, so you need a combination of uh, modes of media, so whether it's a video, a uh, slideshow, uh, animation, whatever it might be. Uh, you also, the, the, con the content of your multimedia, it needs to have analysis, evaluation, and then the conclusion. Just be aware the conclusion's worth six marks. So when you're dividing up the time, make sure you devote a fair chunk of time to the conclusion. Okay. Now, if you're looking through the IA overall project stages, first of all, you've got focus, then you've got the exploration of your research, and now we're into the investigation, the reflection, and the sharing. So it's, your multimedia is basically, you've done your research, and now you're sharing what you've discovered and what you've found and your insights. Now, what works for me best, when I was a, well, I still am a student, uh, and this works best for me as a teacher as well, um, guiding students, is I like this strategy best. It's having the criteria in mind before you even begin. So what I mean by that is let's look exactly at the assessment criteria and let's start creating, this is what I would do, create exactly with the criteria in mind. Um, that way you're not wasting time and energy. Uh, and I've seen that done with a lot of students. They start doing this project and they're going all around the place. It's all wasted time and energy. So this video, I wanna focus you on doing exactly what the criteria asks for so you can get top marks. So the way the investigation goes, so I'm gonna be aiming to try and help you get a six uh, for the analysis and evaluation. Uh, by the way, this documentation, I'll share this as well so you can use this as a guide. I'll put it in the comments below and I'll share it on my, one of my, a blog of mine, uh, a Digital Society blog. Uh, the conclusion worth six marks, so we're aiming, I'm gonna try and help you get six marks and then the communication style's worth three marks. So study the assessment criteria and create exactly with that criteria in mind. So you're not wasting any time and energy uh, on stuff that's not gonna actually boost your marks. Okay, the content. This is what I would suggest you do. Start with an introduction. Now the introduction, a good way to start an introduction is to start with kind of like a question or a fact. So just think of any kind of good documentary or, or even a TV show or a movie, it starts with something that draws the audience in. So um, that's what I would try and start with. Um, now, once you've sort of raised a question or piqued the viewer's interest, then you can start getting into your what your inquiry focus is. So here's an example, something like if you're studying autonomous vehicles, and you can start with a question like, have you ever wondered what it would be like to catch a bus to school 
and the bus is a, is, doesn't have a driver, this kind of thing. You know, so, and then you can say, well, my inquiry focus is on autonomous vehicles. So just remember too, the target audience, the target audience for your project, teachers, moderators, examiners, and your classmates, like diploma, student, that kind of a target audience. So keep that, that's the language you want to, want to use. So get your guidebook out or think about past exams and use that kind of language, those phrases, um, and that style of communication. That's if you want to get top marks. Okay, once you've done your introduction, you now need to dig into your analysis and evaluation. And one of the dangers here is people just sharing information. Oh, I've found this and I found that. That's not really analysis and evaluation. So the idea is that you're getting pieces of information, interesting research, linking it, connecting it, and asking more questions and demonstrating that you're actually analyzing and evaluating. So here's an interesting piece of information, but that makes me wonder what about blah, blah, blah. This is you demonstrating your analysis and evaluation. Now what's super important is that it's supported. So whatever you, whatever content you kind of, whatever point you raise or, or key fact connected to research. According to this website, blah, 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 blah. According to my primary research, where I surveyed 100 students, blah, 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 blah. According to theguardian.com, whatever it might be, just keep using those phrases so when the person is uh, assessing your work, it's clear to, clear to them that you've done some quality research, consistently linking all the key parts to research. The other favorite key phrase of digital society is impacts. So when you're talking about technology, whatever it might be, how does that impact a person? How does that impact a society, a community? So talking about impacts is really, really important. Get used to that phrase and use it and use it and use it over and over again. Um, next bullet point here I've got talking about is demonstrating your thinking. To get top marks, you need to demonstrate that you are an analytical thinker, uh, that you're a critical thinker. So think of ways, how can I, how can, when somebody watches my multimedia presentation, I want them to come to the conclusion that, gee whiz, that person is very clever. They've got good thinking. So that's what, that's what you need to think about. Oh, that's what you need to produce if you want top marks. Um, the other thing is to make it some kind of original uh, or kind of unique. So your multimedia presentation, it can't just be, oh, here, here's an article. I'm just gonna tell you about the article or some well-known research. If you can do something slightly unique, then it's interesting and you're on track for top marks. Um, I've thrown in the key command terms here for analyze and evaluate. So that's what you have to do. So uh, be sure that you actually do an analysis and you evaluate if you wanna to get top marks. Um, what else should I point out here? Okay, let's move on to criterion D, which is the conclusion, and this is worth six marks. Um, so the way you wanna conclude is, so you've got your introduction and then you've got your evaluation and analysis. And now when you conclude, be sure that you, um, a good, a good researchers, they don't say, um, this is what I found, full stop. When research concludes, it's really just the begin be beginning of more research. So when you conclude, you wanna talk about some possible ideas for future study or possible things for further consideration um, or um, thing, things for governments to consider or people to consider, or perhaps this is a field of interest, uh, a research that needs to be done and here are some recommendations. So your conclusion is just a springboard for further study, so keep that in mind. The idea is that you're pre presenting some kind of new ideas or fresh ideas um, and that's what these, these are all the things that you've discovered through your research. Um, very important, if you want to get top marks, you want to get six out of six for the conclusion, you need to discuss emerging trend. Now fortunately in digital society, that's where we're dealing with technology. So technology is forever changing, ever changing at a rapid, rapid speed. So this shouldn't be too hard for you to do as a technology, a digital society student. So be sure that you discuss emerging trends and future developments. Make sure you've got a, a, a chunk of text and some visuals about that. Now, again, just back to that, everything needs to be well supported. So whatever you do, what, um, do, do not just share your thoughts. It needs to be 
connected to research. Don't share your opinion. I think, I believe, connected to, connect everything to research. That's if you want to get top marks. Okay, part E, communication, that is the uh, basically the way your uh, uh, multimedia is presented and you're communicating. Um, it's got to be well structured. Get used to that digital society and the assessment criteria, well structured and effectively organized. It's really, really important. So I would suggest making it super clear. This is the introduction, maybe a title screen. My next topic is blah, blah, blah. Now let me talk about, so these are like subheadings. So you've got your, your key headings that you can even use some title screen or text. And you also talk about these. And this is my next topic. And make, make sure it's like very well organized and, and, and uh, neatly organized, well organized and arranged in a, in a kind of succinct and logical manner. And when it comes to your conclusion, also say that. To conclude, make it clear to the audience that you're doing a conclusion. Use the phrase, use the words for, for further analysis, I did blah, blah, blah. So remember the audience is gonna be listening. They're, you're a, whoever's assessing the work, the work is looking for something that is well-structured and organized. And the easiest way to do that is with title screens, or you might call them signposts. Um, okay, some other things. You're a technology student, so the media should be coherent. It should be high quality. Um, the visuals should be connected to the text. And the sound quality has, needs to be excellent as well, uh, and consistent as well. We don't want loud, uh, quiet, background noise, no background, different microphones. Make sure the sound quality is the best and consistent. So here's a few tips here. I'm not gonna talk about them. I'll just share them with you. Um, but basically, you wanna make an engaging presentation. You don't want the audience to fall asleep. So think about clever use of visuals, uh, making it engaging, and one e easy way to make things engaging is by asking a question and maybe answering it. Asking a question, then asking another question. Talk about you, you know, the you. Have you ever considered? So try and actually really communicate clearly to that audience. Um, okay, this is what I would be getting if I was a, a digital society student. This is what I. This is how I'd be tackling it. You can do like a storyboard, or I've done like a table here. But basically, when you when it comes to putting your presentation together, I would suggest just chunking it in in thirty second sessions and think about, okay, what content am I gonna do and you, uh, kind of share in this 30 second? And then think, okay, if I'm speaking, how many words does a normal human speak in 30 seconds? So you kind of get an idea of how much text, how much content you need to put in that 30 second area. Um, then you also start thinking, okay, which visuals are gonna accompany this? So my suggestion, if I'm thinking, okay, you've got 10 minutes, I would spend the first minute, for, so first 30 seconds, I would be doing some kind of started, sort of like piquing the, 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 uh, the audience's curiosity. And then the second 30 seconds, so from 30 seconds to one minute, I would then just be sharing about what my content is. In this presentation, I am going to cover blah, 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 blah. So pick the interest, then explain what you're gonna cover in, the, in, the, in your multimedia presentation. And then at the one minute mark, I will be diving into your actual research. My research topic is, my research, my inquiry top, topic is, uh, my, my, uh, um, my research question is, and make it really, really clear to the audience and spend time explaining that. Okay, then I've broken it up. I don't know what your research topic is, but I would be trying to break it up into maybe two, three, four, five parts, and then just try and evenly distribute the time. This is the key thing I wanna talk about. Maybe I'm going to allocate one minute or one and a half minute. Here's the second key thing I want to talk about. I'll allocate a minute there. So chunk it in, to peak in times, and then at about the eight minute mark, uh, that you, you do your conclusion. That means you've got a conclusion for about two minutes. So maybe you want to do a bit more. Maybe you want to go for at the seven minute mark because the conclusion is worth six marks. So don't skimp. Don't just do a brief paragraph which you can conclusion, devote a fair chunk of time. So I'd recommend one or two minutes for your conclusion. Um, now, I've also put this column on the right-hand side uh, is the due date. So once you've kind of got your content and the visuals and the word count uh, and the timestamps kind of organized, 
you might want to think about some due dates. So when it, when's the project due? When do I want to have it? So maybe maybe each of those sections you want to complete in a week. So map it out like that. It's going to help you with your organization, with your project management. Now, another suggestion is to actually make a storyboard. You've probably created a storyboard in your life somehow. Uh, when you're creating stories, uh, maybe in the middle school, something like that, maybe you might want to map that out as well. That could, that could be a very helpful uh, stage in your planning. To conclude my little document here, I've got a whole bunch of, of uh, inquiry, IA inquiry tips. Um, you could use this like a checklist, if you like. Um, if you need any clarification with these, you can send me a comment and I'll try and explain, but I'm conscious that I don't want this video to go too long, so I'm not gonna go through them all. I'll just share them, and if you have any questions, you can ask me. Anyway, thanks for watching, and good luck with your IA.